you have to keep the mic close to your lips because right. it's a mic for singing. This is uh, Antti Seppanen and Antti Heikki Pesonen. Both of them are filmmakers here from Finland. And uh, they have experience with short films and uh, they have their own way of working. So uh, they're going to tell a little bit about how they do that. And I think we should start off with a little bit of visual um, material. Uh, we're going to show Antti's a trailer for Antti's uh, short documentary, I guess it is. Yes. Kaksi laatikkoa, kaita filmejä. Jonkun koko elämä ja kokemukset myytävänä kirpputorilla. Missäkö olen? Kuva kertoo. Terveisin itte. Täältä maailman lopusta. Itse. So yeah, that was a trailer of your your film. When I first met you, uh, I think it was an, an event that you had organized where you were actually showing these found films, and that's backstory for this as well, isn't it? That you found a box of films. Yes, uh, I had been into uh, finding or uh, buying uh, uh, films on flea markets, but this was uh, a, a big pile compared to the other findings. And that was uh, already nine years ago I, fi I found, uh, found the films and uh, I got great inspiration. I thought that this will make a film and it, it did. It took six years, but uh, anyway. How, how does it work when you, you have someone else shooting the material for you that you don't know? You know, you have this, uh, I don't know how many hours was in that box, but you have to kind of create a story around that. Where did you, get, where did you start out from and was, how was the journey until the finished film? Uh, of course, uh, first when I uh, saw the film, I thought that this is great material. There there's has to be a extraordinary story behind this. Why, why are they abandoned like this? Uh, decades of commitment uh, of making beautiful images uh, all around the world. And I think I'm uh, essentially someone who finds things and uh, gets inspiration on that. I, I don't have uh, that uh, good imagination that I could uh, create uh, uh, great things out of nothing. I, I, this was a perfect opportunity for me that somebody else had uh, already done a great job of shooting all these wonderful images and it was uh, quite easy for me to make the film yeah, on yeah. based on that. And Antti, you work in a... Antti and Antti. Well, <laughs> Antti, you work in a, in a very different universe. You work with <laughs> short fiction films. Yes, that's true. I do narrative films, do not documentary films. And uh, when, when you asked me to come here, you, you asked me why, why... Did you ask, if I remember correctly, you asked me why, why do I do stories or films or yes, something like yes. that. Yeah. And I thought about that, and I, I guess my answer to that is that <coughs> real life tends to be random. 
But uh, narrative films usually have a focus. They usually have a clear path. Uh, they're the opposite of real life that is usually somewhat meaningless and random. Mm. So I guess that's my answer. Why do I do these things? So that's uh, the main uh, thing that interests you when, you when you write a story for one of your films. Is that the randomness of life, the situations? Uh, well, I, yeah, sure, in a way. But I, I think it's mainly because... It, uh, short narrative films and narrative mainstream films and uh, feature lens films tends to be the opposite of the randomness of mm. real life. And I guess that's, you know, the m main reason why people tend to even watch these films is because they offer you the clear focus of this is, what, this, this is why this happens and that happens and that happens and that happens. When in uh, our common lives, things are usually a bit more murky and you're, you can't really focus there's not always a reason that you can find for exactly, something. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I guess that's also some of the themes that you worked with in your films, that, you know, the, there's not always a reason that the main character can see. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it also, uh, I tend to have a point of view, if you, if you compare it to mainstream films, that usually their point of view is that life is okay, you're going to make it. My point of view is you're not going to make it. <laughs> so it's a like, typical Finnish point of view? or <laughs> well, Might be, might be, yeah. But I, I also feel that there's some kind of, well, very Finnish in a way as well, that there's this dark humor behind your stories. S sure, yeah, it's, it's in, in Finnish we have this expression, it's, it's like uh, humor when you're going to hang yourself or something like that. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of like those jokes that you tell when everything has gone wrong and you're gonna, you know, it's gone. You just have to lighten up the situation. Yeah, because it's so terrible that you can either cry or laugh and you've done all the crying so you can only laugh anymore, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you ever thought about if you have a, like a style that is yours? Like, have you ever kind of tried to define your own style? Well, well I think su such things are not... You, you shouldn't think about your style, at least when I talk about myself as objectively as something that you can, you can define because mm. it's, I, I believe in the subconscious thinking that it, it's your subconscious that gets projected in the film so you shouldn't really think about too much too analytically at first at least when you do these films because it's you that gets projected into film if you don't, you know, be too analytic about it. Yeah. I, I don't think that you should be too reasonable, at least at the very beginning of a project. So how do you usually start? It's, like, it's, it's a question for both of you. Is it more a matter of intuition, or do you try to plan things out and try to find structure in what you're doing? It's like, if you start. Yes, I, I often uh, try to, uh, or have, have tried to thought of what kind of film would I like to make and make uh, research and plan, but then, uh, it, it often happens that uh, it, it doesn't really touch me in a way. Mm. And, and, uh, but then when I find, uh, when the subject finds me or when I find a subject somewhere, that, that's when I get uh, inspired. It was like uh, when I went to Africa a year ago, I went to stay there in an artist residency and I had made a plan for a project and made research here and thought that, oh, there, there I will go and find people and, uh, uh, to, uh, who can I illustrate this idea or, or, of a short documentary. But when I went there, I thought that I don't really feel like doing it. But then when I <clears throat> met, met the people there, so then I thought that, why don't I let them suggest what would they like to what kind of film would they like to see about themselves? And uh, I en ended up making eight or nine short films uh, on like very, very quick short films made, made in uh, one week uh, each of the life of the village people. And I screened them there. And that, that was very, very, it felt very uh, liberating con uh, compared to the this film, I spent six years in the making. Mm. Yeah, compared to one week, that's not a lot. Yes. <laughs> so did it feel <laughs> more fun. like a collaboration, or was it more <coughs> like the idea was the collaboration, and then you were... The, the idea was a collaboration, and, uh, and that also... Uh, it was a wonderful thing, because they were suggesting the thing, so that gave me access 
to the uh, lives of the people because mm. I, I didn't have to negotiate and uh, gain their trust. Uh, I, I had I had already been accepted to do this, and that it, it was I was making the film for them. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Antti? Do you plan things out from the start, or do you try to structure it, or do you try to be more intuitive when you work with your ideas? Uh, well, I usually start with having a discussion with, with a friend of mine. Uh, it doesn't have to be the same friend about some, some subject that interests me. And after that, I, I basically just for a couple of weeks, I close the door of my working space, and I don't let anybody in. And I just, <laughs> what, what's inside me, I let it to go to the page. And that's basically my, I, I don't, like I said before, I don't, in my case, I don't believe that you should be thinking too much reason, with the reasonable part of your brain at the yeah, beginning. Yeah. But uh, af after you've done that subconscious thing, then it's good f for me to look at it with, with reason of, you know, how, wh what, what did I do? Yeah. yeah. It's like what I, I hear you saying is that it, in both cases, it kind of starts with working with other people. And then you incubate your idea, like you kind of lock your door and you think about it into depth. Um, do you ever get stuck on, on your project? What do you do when you're sitting there in your room and you feel that you can't get any further? I, I think that happens always. I basically just panic. I, I just, you know, <laughs> that's uh, uh, yeah, that's the honest answer. And I, <coughs> I just didn't, then I just have to keep going on. I don't, I, yeah. If I stop, then it's all, then I'm not gonna, I just have to have faith in myself. It sounds like an like American lifestyle, whatever, <laughs> whatever book, but it's true. I, I just have to keep going, which is ironical if, 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 I, if the point of view of, of my story is you're not gonna make it, then I have to tell <laughs> myself I'm gonna make it. But that, that's basically my working process on those situations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a question um, to Ante. I just want to ask you about how actually did you, um, do you feel when you're working with some uh, really short material? Well, it's, 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 it was fascinating for me because it was uh, a great material and always uh, it, it always gave me surprises and, and new things I could find, find uh, on it. And, and when I got the more background information, it, it opened, up, uh, opened up for me. And of course, uh, because the uh, person who had shot the material was, uh, was uh, dead already, so I, did, I didn't have to negotiate uh, w with him. How, how do I uh, use this material? Of course, I had to negotiate with uh, myself. Uh, what, what's the... What kind of right do I have to use this material, or how can I use it? But I, I discussed that, uh, that uh, with the other person, the persons uh, about the moral issues and the legal issues, and uh, eventually I thought that uh, uh, the kind of uh, film I'm making uh, with, with, the, with this ad attitude that I have is uh, an uh, admiration and respect. So I, I gave myself the permission to use this material. Yeah, and I think when you see the film, you also get the feeling that it's an exploration of a, a mystery. You know, you're finding this box and there's a story inside and you have to find the story. And I think if you, if you have the chance to watch the film uh, when it comes to the television, I think you should watch it because it, it kind of explains, for me at least, the experience that you must have had. Yeah. Thank you guys for sharing.